Welcome to PDMA Corporation, home of the MC Emacs. I'd like to thank you for joining us as we continue along in our presentation series. Once again, we have the Vice President of Product Development, Mr. Noah Bethel. Hello from sunny Tampa, Florida. And I am Todd Gunderson, the Vice President of Sales and Marketing. And as always, Noah, our customers have come through for us with another great case study. Failure to start. You know, you got to start to run. It sounds ominous, so we're going to jump into this. Uh, uh, some great data to present. And here's our problem. In the past, we, we, we've had this cold conveyor belt, not this same one, but the one uh, maybe a few case studies back. It didn't start on a Saturday. Now this one's not starting on a Sunday. Weekends, weekends. Never Monday through Friday. It's always on the weekend. And how many times do you think this didn't start before the technician got the call? I'm guessing operations tried to start it a few times before giving maintenance a call. Right. And especially if we look at the nameplate, it's a 480 volt. There's probably not any procedures in place as to how many times it should right. be Right. High population motor, no requirements, sp starts per hour, or anything like that. So if we look at the nameplate, we can see this is a customer group that have been doing a lot of testing because we're always asking to look at the, all of the nameplate and put in the number of bars. That can really help you out in a troubleshooting event. Sadly, it's rare we see that. And, and this type of well-populated birth certificate, without question, will help tech support help you. So this is the data that came in, and it doesn't look promising. It looks like it's going cycling from maybe doing 20 actual startups over a four-second period. It doesn't even look like a startup. It looks like a, an incredible cycling of current and torque, which cannot be good for a motor. So we always say the inrush startup is the most stressful time of a motor. Why is that? Well, the type, when you're talking about 7 to 10 times the normal current, the, the torque that's produced to get that motor moving uh, is extremely stressful, not just electrical. The heat produced by that type of current is high, but even mechanical. So shaft line components can also pay a price for this type of cycling. So they wanted to do an offline test to see the motor, if there was any damage to the motor or was the motor causing this. Um, do a spin test to see if there's anything binding. Nothing and this is what the data presented. Yeah, this kind of standard test would, if, if that's all you took, uh, would not make you be too concerned about the motor itself. We also did a polarization index test, and this, you know, signs of embrittlement maybe? Yeah, the linear, the continuous linear increase of resistance to ground uh, from the beginning to the end of the test, it can result in a fairly high PI value, the 10 divided by the one minute. Um, and, and that's going to raise the concern about, as it says, embrittlement and then possibly, uh, you know, excessive heating. So the data, there was some questions about what direction should we go with this? Is this a rotor problem? Possibly. That's what they were leaning towards, but they did the, they did the thing that we always ask them to do. And if there's a doubt, send it to PDMA, like you say. Call us before you call the crane. Call us before you call the crane. And our engineers are here to do free analysis. Free is my favorite price. And these guys live it. They breathe it. They eat it, they digest it. These guys look at motors every day. It's what they do. It's what they do. So some points of interest. This motor and controller is located in a high ambient noise environment. It means you can't hear it start up. Yeah, and in, in, in a lot of industrial environments, the cycling of a contactor like that it may be overlooked. Digital ammeter clamp on. It said it was at 600 amps continuous. Right. Those RMS meters aren't going to always sample at a frequency and show raw data that actually allows you to troubleshoot this properly. So it may be lower than you'd expect. It might be lasting longer than they expect. And, and all that may point to that rotor concern. And maybe that's why those the technicians there felt it could be a rotor problem. But like I said, you fall back to PDMA because this is what we do. It's what we do. And our staff engineers felt maybe this is a different area we should be looking at. Let's look at the contactor cycling. So they went back and they performed another test with the control circuit open so they could hear it. And sure enough, another rapid cycling event. Another rapid cycling. And this time they could hear. With audio support. With yes. audio support, right? So they could hear that happening. It was isolated. They found out that a holding resistor uh, had failed. It makes sense. It's a, The contactor is a single phase item, so it, as voltage goes through zero, if you don't have the current to maintain it, it's going to try to open back up, and this is what was happening. 
So this is a look at it. You can see you wouldn't see any arcing going on because they're in these three canisters, as it, those three phases. So many contactors, they are totally enclosed, no way to see them, and, and even sound insulated. And the backside, here's that resistor we're talking about. Probably a pretty cheap component on this. Inexpensive small part makes such a big deal. And after it's replaced, normal looking inrush, right? That's what an inrush is supposed to look like, yes. And uh, you see the 7 to 10 times in current. Are these motors usually in the most convenient of locations to replace, Noah? No, and a, a motor that size may not start out critical, but when you have to do what they have to do to get that out, it becomes more critical. Well, it's a beautiful thing when you can use our technical support to help solve a fairly interesting uh, problem, and we can help you really kind of prevent you from having to change this motor. A great use of the application. That you, you got to love it when a plan comes together. Yeah. So as always, we thank you for your time. We thank you for always giving us information to share with our group out there. And if you have any comments or suggestions, please feel free to contact us. Until then, you stay safe out there and have a great day.